I find that the best way to mask your identity is by always changing your face. So in this tutorial, stable diffusion on a video, running it on every single fucking frame. Let's do it. Okay, so we've done the creepy intro and now it's time for me to show you how to run stable diffusion on a video. So let's get into it. So uh, the first thing to realize is you can't actually run stable diffusion on a video, at least not the way we're gonna do it. We're actually gonna turn the video into a bunch of images and run it on every single image. But before we continue, this video is sponsored by Yahaha. Let me tell you about them and then I will show you how to do stable diffusion video as you can see right here. So Yahaha is a new UGC, a user user-generated content platform for 3D multiplayer interactive games. With Yahaha, anyone can create and publish their own virtual experience without any of the coding, nonsense, or server knowledge. Simply use the cool features, components, and smart assets in Yahaha Studios. There's over a million of them available to make your dream games. So, uh, Yahaha hosts regular live sessions for the community to help creators enhance their multiverse building skills on Twitch. Uh, you can follow them on Twitch or check out the previous sessions on YouTube. Now, a bit of a demo about how to use this to make a very simple game. Step one, we're going to choose a hide and seek game template from the create section. So we're going for a hide and seek game. Now, step two, inside the template in edit mode, we're going to go to the asset library, click on components and pick the behavior player transformation component card. And we're going to add that card to our assets. Step three, go back to the asset library and pick your favorite 3D asset. So we're going to view this in scene and this asset will be on on our map. Now, drag the chosen 3D asset next to your spawn point to make sure that you can immediately see it when you're play testing the game. And step five, click on the chosen 3D model, go to gameplay setup menu on the right side, click on the add component button to add the behavior player transformation component card onto the chosen 3D asset. So click the play button on the top right corner and you can enter play test mode where we can run around as our character towards the 3D model that we chose and transform it. So if all of that sounds good to you, you can click the link in the description to try Yahaha Studio and start making your dream game without any of the coding. So uh, go to image to image. By the way, if you don't know what the fuck is on the screen, uh, I made a tutorial about how to install this. So image to image is basically this idea in stable diffusion of being able to upload an image. So let's say we have a this dude and we want to make a slight mod modification to him. So we take this image and we want to say something like painted by some famous painter, right? So this is some dude. Um, if we take this, add this prompt and click generate, what we expect to show up is some kind of modification of this image. Uh, you could tell that it's kind of drawing from this uh, for inspiration, but not exactly. And that's what we need to talk about. So before we do a video, we got to master an image. Um, under this, you're going to see a bunch of settings, uh, sampling, uh, what kind of sampling, the width, the height, all, all this. The main thing I want you to look at is this denoise strength. And the main takeaway is the larger this number is, this is the main thing we're going to play with. The larger this number is, uh, the more it's going to kind of ignore this image. So now we just have a painting by this dude, right? On the other hand, as we lower the strength of this denoise, what you're going to notice is we're going to get something closer to the original image. It's almost like we're generating uh, alternate versions of this that kind of look like a painting, kind of not. Um, in fact, you can actually get rid of this prompt. And at this point, we're just going to be generating alternate versions of this image. This is important because when I'm taking a input video and splitting it up into images and then saying kind of reprocess each one, I want each one of them to kind of look different, but also kind of similar. So this denoise strength needs to be in some kind of Goldilocks zone. So let's try 0.5. I want it to kind of like have the same shape of the mouth, but kind of look like a different person. So this is just giving us like somewhat alternate takes of the same dude in different styles. I'm going to even go a bit crazier. So you, you want to take your artistic liberties here. Don't go too crazy. Otherwise, it's going to be like not even resembling the dude. But you can see these are all kind of like alternate versions of the same thing. And now the question is, what happens if we do this and run it on every single image of a video? So we're going to do exactly that. In fact, here's a video of me just waving my head back and forth. And the only preparation you need to do for this tutorial is uh, you can see in this batch sequence in folder, I just made a folder, uh, I made all the frames for this. So you could either use your video editing tool or FFmpeg or whatever. So get your video into a bunch of uh, images. And then, and then if we go to not image to image, but 
batch image to image. In other words, do it as a batch, do it as a batch of cookies over and over and over again. Um, it's going to let us put a input directory and an output directory. A input directory is the folder, right click copy address, is the folder where the images are. That's where it's going to read from. And it's going to output to, and I already made a folder for this, batch sequence out. In other words, make a folder with a name and then paste the directory. So it's going to pull in from the in, and then it's going to go out to the out. As for these settings, again, you can fine tune them. All I care about is this denoise strength, and this is going to be inherited each time. Another thing to note is uh, you want to ask yourself, do I want a different seed every single time? In my case, I do, so I'm going to leave this at a negative number. Otherwise, you can keep one seed, and it will kind of use the same generation each time. If I click Generate, you're going to see right now it's going through each image and then uh, processing it. Um, one thing that is going to be weird about this is you are going to see it's kind of pulling from my original video, but it's looking like super, super bizarre, right? Um, the reason for this, um, I mean, there's a bunch of reasons. One, we made our like denoise strength very high, uh, but one reason for this is the width and height do not match the image. So I had like a 16 by nine aspect ratio, like a 1080p. Uh, so one thing I want to do is I want to match the aspect ratio. So I'm going to do it at, you can do it at half resolution or less, so 1920 goes down to 960 and 1080 goes down to 540. So I'm going to render at half resolution and then we can upscale. In fact, you could even go a bit lower. So if we have a 16 by 9 ratio, let's bust out the calculator. Let's say we take 600 pixels and do it as a 16 by 9. So I multiply by 9, divide by 16. So I can make images that are 600 pixels, and the smaller the image, you know, the faster it generates, uh, by 338, it seems. Uh, so again, you can see it did its best here, but it's kind of super cursed. <laughs> so you at least want to match the aspect ratio, so that's one common mistake. Um, I've matched the aspect ratio, and now let's try generating again. So it's going to go from our input directory and again put it in the output directory, this time uh, significantly faster. And you can already tell there's a bit more coherence here. Again, we expect it to look super different every single frame, but you can tell that it's kind of like mimicking the original uh, look for this. Okay, we are back, and you can see that we have 50 images generated. Again, you can tell I'm moving my head from side to side and then opening my mouth uh, towards the end. It's a little hard to tell because we might have gone a bit hard with the denoise strength, but you can tell the initial driving animation is there. So now the question is, how do we take this and bump up the resolution and add a bit of clarity to this? Well, uh, just like before, uh, let me show you the process on a single image, and then we will move to a video. So with extras now, uh, we have a single image input. Let's try, I mean, let's try the same image as before. I mean, ideally we'd want to use one of these batch sequence out ones, but you, you could do whatever. Um, this is going to resize our image. I'm going to do it by a factor of four. So stretch by two on the X and Y axis, which multiplies to four. And for the upscaler, you could do two different upscalers for like step one and two. I'm just going to use this upscaler for the first step. I'm going to move this slider up. I'm going to move this slider up. You can read into it. Uh, but you'll notice that when I do this, it's going to upscale our image and kind of add details that weren't there before. It's just going to hallucinate some details. Uh, so originally, this was a 512 by 512 image. I'm just talking and waiting for this to uh, generate the thing. Um, and you can see, and now we have a much higher resolution image that I can open up and you can see the wrinkles and all this. So it hallucinated some details, but it upscaled it. You can expect it to be much stronger. I don't know why I have these upscaled images from before. It's because I tried to already record these tutorials. But for a low resolution image like this, that's kind of blurry, it's going to do uh, wonders. So we're going to repeat the same process, but for a batch process. So batch, uh, not just batch process, but batch from directory is going to let us do the same thing. So now we're going to use the output directory from before. So that's where our generated images are. Paste that in. And then I'm going to make a new folder. Already made it called upscaled and copy address. So really, we have three folders. Our source folder, our generated image, images folder, and then our upscaled folder. Uh, for this, uh, I don't need to show result images. And I'm just going to use the same things. So let's see, generate. 
uh, what we expect to happen is it's going to do it as a batch process. And we can see that if we go to the upscale folder. One thing that I've noticed, and I don't really know how to get around, maybe there's a setting here, uh, but it does seem to make duplicates of these images. Um, but either way, they are upscaled versions. So if I open this up, you can see, whoa, it's high resolution and there's actually detail on the skin and all this. This is this is cursed as fuck though. <laughs> uh, so what it's doing is it's going through each image and upscaling it. By the way, so it's making a list of uh, two for each one. Uh, you can see if I organize this as not a list, but as a detailed list, uh, it's gonna generate a JPEG and a PNG. Uh, what we can do is we could either say keep the high res PNGs or get rid of the JPEGs. And you could either delete one and then the second one and then the fourth one, or you could just organize by size and all the high resolution PNGs are gonna flow to the top and uh, then you can remove them. So uh, just like before, I'm gonna wait a while until we have our 50 frames. Honestly, it's not that long. Um, and I will see you in a bit. Okay, so our images are done upscaling. Again, we have a duplicate of each one of these. So what we can do is we can view uh, detailed and then sort by size and get rid of all the PNGs at the top. So anything that's like five megabytes seems to be a PNG. Delete those and then sort by name again. Uh, you can see uh, now we have a image sequence that kind of follows the guiding uh, video, although it looks very, very uh, cursed. Uh, basically, this is the process for creating a batch video or a batch image sequence. Uh, the only thing you might want to change is instead of this randomization thing, you might want to do a similar theme uh, for each image, in which case the only thing you would change in this process is an image to image. Uh, you would add some kind of prompt here and maybe you would take the seed and how do we hold it constant? Uh, you, I think a negative one means kind of do it random each time. Um, so you could just kind of pick a uh, random seed. Uh, I think this means refresh as in reuse the seed over and over and over again. And you can go uh, into this and look at seed variation and all, all of this. I wouldn't worry about it. So uh, that is how you make a video. And yeah, hopefully you learned something.